Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. Proverbs 11.25 reads, The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Both the Old and the New Testament tell us that generosity paves the way for prosperity. Join me for part one of the message, The Generous Will Prosper. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. I really felt impressed to the Lord to talk on the subject that I'm going to talk on tonight, And I'm going to share a message with you this evening, and the title is, The Generous Soul Will Prosper. The Generous Soul Will Prosper. Of course, that was spoken way before Pastor Tom ever said that. There was a man named Solomon that said that. It's found over in Proverbs chapter 11 in verse number 24 and 25. It says this, There is one who scatters yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but leads to poverty. Now, that seems like a paradox, a paradox meaning contradictory. It doesn't seem to make sense. Like, wait a minute, say that again? You're telling me there's one person that scatters, but yet they increase, and then you have another person that's holding on more than what is right. Now, it doesn't have a problem with holding on to things, but notice this, more than is right, but it leads to poverty. So you have two people. One person's generous, and they're getting ahead in life. And you got another person that's a real stingy, miser, and guess what? They're getting behind in life. And that doesn't make sense. Like, how does that happen? How is it that this generous person is moving forward and this stingy person is being held back? Well, the Bible tells us in verse 25, The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. It's a generous soul, a generous person. So really, we fall in that category. Are we a generous person or are we a stingy person? Are we a giver or are we a taker? You know, we have two hands. One of those hands is receiving But, you know, another one of those hands needs to be giving. We need to be willing to recognize this is the right time. I need to be a giver. The same hand that gives will also gather. And you find people that are generous, people that are kind and benevolent, you'll discover that there's a generosity in their life that produces increase in their life. John Wesley said this, do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. As the body of Christ, we want to be a blessing. We know that was the word God gave Abraham, that I will bless you, and you'll be a blessing to other people. So basically, you can discover there's some people, they leave behind a trail of tears, meaning wherever they go, they're like a a wrecking ball. They just kind of go through life and they just leave a lot of hurt feelings behind them, a lot of pain with people they've interacted with. And then there's another group of people, pretty much everywhere they went, boy, there was a blessing. They were there for so long and they were a blessing and they helped. And that's how we want to be. We want to be those people that behind us, there's a, a trail of blessings. There's a trail of goodwill to other people. So John Bunyan said, A man there was, though some did count him mad, the more he gave, the more he had. And that's it. There's just some people that they are generous and they know, you know, we need to bless. Now, tithing is a paradox. Paradox is a contradictory statement. I mean, how is it that you can live off 90% of your income and you're going to live better than another person that's living off 100% of their income? I can't tell you how it works, but I'll tell you people, I'm a testimony that it works. It's just like God blesses. God takes care of things. Now, I tell you, I don't always get checks in the mail that say, from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? I don't get checks in the mail like that. But I tell you, I look back on my life and I think, but God. 
this happened, this could have happened. Think about that, that some things seem absurd, but yet when you dig deep, you realize it's a true statement. It's a factual statement. Generosity brings increase. So in this passage, in another translation, it says in Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 24 and 25, it says, give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. So there is a place in God where you can, in a sense, control your financial destiny. I read a statement not too long ago, and and it said this, the bad news is that time flies. The good news is you're the pilot. In other words, yeah, time's going to go fast, but that's the bad news. The good news is you're the one that's determining where that time's going. Well, we could say it this way, money can be spent and money can come through our hands and money can go out, but it's not out of your control. You can have control over that life. It's funny because, you know, when you hear people talk about they're in a bind and, well, you know, I have to tithe. And I think, well, yeah, I'm grateful for your tithe, but of course that's between you and the Lord. But y'all, there's still 90% of your income there that's unaccounted for. You know, so it's not like the tithe is a 80% tithe, right? It's a really a small thing. I don't know about you, but nowadays tips, they're starting at 18%. Have you noticed that? Ecclesiastes chapter 11 in verse number one, it says, cast your bread upon the waters for you will find it after many days. Notice verse two, give a serving to seven and also to eight for you do not know what evil will be on the earth. So that's a little ambiguous, isn't it? Give a serving to seven or eight because you don't know what evil is going to come on the earth. So, you know, when you hear that, it sounds like, well, wait a minute, that, that's a little ambiguous. How do those two scriptures tie together? Okay, so cast your bread upon the waters. So it's a picture of you spreading out merchant ships, grain ships, sending out vessels. Solomon was a man of commerce. It's a picture of just send out a lot, cast out, just stay active, and then cast them out to seven or eight because you don't know where the increase is going to come. It's a picture of being adventurous. It's a picture of being willing to take a risk. It's a picture of a merchant sending out grain, like I said earlier, in ships. Solomon was involved in various kinds of trade. And it was natural for him to use this illustration. So when you send out these ships, it might be months before you see something come back. You know, there's things that you invest in and there's things that you give towards. And I like the word invest. When you invest in the kingdom of God, that you may not see a return for that for some time. God doesn't settle up within three days. But I'll promise you this, God is not going to owe anybody anything. And if you'll take care of your side of the ledger, God's going to take care of his side of the ledger. God takes it serious. He sees everything you've done. He has a book of remembrance, and we know that he was watching people give their offerings that day when he saw the little widow lady give two mites. And he watched that. He saw what she gave, and he said, wherever the gospel's preached, it's going to be told, this story. I just want us to realize that this passage says, cast your bread upon the waters and you will find it after many days. And notice the message Bible here says this. It says, be generous, invest in acts of charity. Charity yields high returns. Don't hoard your goods, spread them around. Be a blessing to others. This could be your last night. So don't hoard everything, right? Now, I know you say, Pastor, I don't hoard anything, but there's a temptation for us to hold on to stuff. And I'm going to read to you some thoughts this evening about generosity. I want y'all to think in terms of generosity. Now, you can find a way to be generous. Even if you don't have money, you can find a way to be generous. You can be generous You know, if you're able to mow, you can mow your yard and mow the next door neighbor's yard if they need it. Or you can edge your yard and edge theirs. 
you can just look for ways to think, what can I do to be a blessing to someone else? And a lot of it's just being considerate, it's being thoughtful. So I called Bill today, Bill Kern, and I said, Bill, now go over this kernel of corn illustration one more time, okay? So it's been a while since you told me that illustration. Let's go over it one more time. So he prefaced it by saying, I'm not a corn farmer, number one, but I'll tell you what I do know. And he says, so a kernel of corn is a seed. I think we would all agree on that, right? So a kernel of corn is a seed. Once the seed is planted in good soil, that one kernel of corn will produce a stalk, a stalk of corn. Are we together on that, right? One seed produces one stalk. One stalk will have anywhere from two to four ears of corn, okay? High yield, maybe four, low yield, two. Each ear of corn has anywhere from three to 500 kernels of corn. So here you have over a thousand kernels of corn that came out of one kernel of corn that was planted in the ground. Now that's powerful, isn't it? Now, do you think the Lord did that just because it was just a random thing and the Lord's just like, hey, I put that out there and it was just some random idea that I had? Or do you think the Lord did that on purpose to show us there's something powerful about planting a seed? There's something powerful about giving. Now, I want you to see it in this life, and I believe there's promise in the Bible of being blessed in this life, but I want you to also know this earth life is just a small portion of your total existence. It's like a piece of fog. I mean, it's here today, it's gone tomorrow. I promise you this, every seed you've ever sown, there's going to be a reward associated. Even if you don't see it in this life, you're going to see it in the next life, and you're going to see it a billion years from now, a trillion years from now for all eternity. So that's a great illustration of the power of a seed. So generosity needs to be a part of our wealth planning or how we plan for retirement. How are we looking for the years of come? Yeah, part of it is we've got to get some seed in the ground. God's kingdom is the best investment we can make. It is the best investment we can make. And so I'm very thankful that we have that opportunity to invest. So Proverbs chapter three and verse number nine says, honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. The new living says, honor the Lord with your wealth. Notice this statement, with the best part of everything you produce. Then He will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with new and good wine. So it's a picture of as we give out, as we just sow out, God says, give the best part that you have, the first fruit. And as we just say, Lord, I'm gonna sow out, I'm gonna give to you, I'm gonna put this in the ground. Thanks for joining me for this message titled, The Generous Will Prosper. 2 Corinthians 9 reads, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small harvest, but the one who plants generously will get a generous harvest. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.